Hello, I'm Doug, your host for today. I'm going to show you how to make your own special effects. We are going to use a free software called Effects Seer. Let's visit the site and download it. It's a standalone program, no installing required. So double click to start her up. You'll see something like this. Effects Seer is all about nodes and how you use them. Let's run through what we see here. This is a node. We can put things in it. Here we control how many things we want and their basic spawning controls. The middle column shows us the node's position, angle, and scale. This is where we animate movement. And the right column covers our render settings, where we animate colors and transparencies. Let's start with a simple example to see how it works. Here we define the type of content we want our node to have. As you can see there are various options. We'll start with the most common, the sprite. Select the basic render settings tab, and let's import a simple graphic. Navigate to the samples folder in your effects here download, and choose a white circle from one of the textured directories. Press the play button, and observe the behavior. You'll see we have a single sprite, because the spawn count is 1. This lives for 100 frames and then disappears. The spawn rate tells us the number of frames between each new sprite. Let's add some movement. Head over to the position menu, and choose PVA, which means position, velocity, and acceleration. Scroll your mouse over the Y speed value. You can change values this way, or type them instead. Give it a Y speed of 1. Play the animation, and you'll see the sprite shoot upwards. Slow it down to 0.1, and hit play again. Better. Now, let's increase the spawn count to 12 particles. Notice we now have a fuzzy line. This is 12 sprites added one frame after another, as dictated by the spawn rate. Increase the spawn count to 32. Yep, our line gets longer. While in the 3D window, scrolling controls the zoom. Middle mouse button moves the canvas, and the right mouse button takes care of rotation. Okay, time to make things more random. Next to our Y speed, let's add a deviation of 0.1. This means the speed can be anywhere between 0 and 0.2. Now, add speed and deviation to the X and Z axis. It's starting to look like an explosion of sorts. Each particle now has a random speed in every direction. They travel at this speed, until we reach frame 100, when they vanish. Our current loop runs from frame 0 to frame 120. Let's change the time to live to 50. You'll see the particles now disappear at frame 50. We'll make this a little less, say 40, and add a fade out. Enable fade out in the render column, and set the frame count to 20. The particles now start to fade 20 frames before their timely death. Okay, back in the node tree, toggle off the node visibility, and add a new one by right-clicking the root. Give our previous node a name, which is always a good idea. In the new node, load the same sprite. Now choose spawning method from the window menu. The default spawning method is point, where all particles originate from a single point, as in our first node. Let's choose circle for our new node. Now set the vertices to 12. This means there will be 12 points along the circle circumference, that can make particles. At the moment we only have one particle, so raise the particle count to 12. We still see no effect, because the radius of our circle is currently 0. Change this to 3, and you'll see the particles distributed randomly around our circle. Now let's change the spawn mode to clockwise. The particles are now distributed evenly. Yes, it looks like a clock. Rotate our canvas around the right way, so the particles appear in a clockwise fashion. We are going to increase the spawn rate to 10. Now the new particle is created every 10 frames. Our loop is not quite perfect. Notice the particles are disappearing too soon. At frame 100 the first ones have already gone. So let's increase their lifespan to 120. 
It should now loop perfectly. Yay! Now, let's have a look at the render tab. Click on the white color swab and make the particles red. Let's also give the node an appropriate name. OK, we are going to make a copy of this node. In the node tree, right click our red node and select copy. Then select the root node and choose paste. Return our new node to its original white color and give it a name. Play the loop and you'll see the two nodes on top of each other, both displaying the same behavior. Now head to the scale parameters. Play around and notice the effect on the shape of our particles. Now, choose PVA. We are going to animate the scale. Enter a small expansion speed for the X, Y and Z values. Each particle now scales upwards at that speed, from its initial scaling factor of 1. We can change this as well. Set each scaling factor to 0, and play the animation again. Our white particles now start out with a scale of 0, and grow outwards at the expansion speed. Now, let's show you some more properties you can animate. Head over to the Render tab. With the white node selected, choose Random from the Color All menu. Here we can set color and alpha deviations. Each particle will now be colored randomly according to these settings. Clearly, the higher the deviation, the more the color differences. Notice that the particle colors are different for each loop as well. We are now going to demonstrate the concept of inheritance. This is a very powerful way of achieving unique behaviors. Adding a node directly onto another will make it a child of that node, and it will inherit the behavior of its parent. We will start by adding a child to our white node. We can put graphics in this, or choose to use it as a control node. Let's do that. Find our original particle node, and copy it. Then head back to the control node and paste it in. The white squares are from our control node, which is still expecting a sprite. Change this to none, in the node render type window. We now have a control node, which can be very useful for tweaking later on. Turn the particle visibility back on. You'll see that they have inherited the position and scaling, of their parent node. The other node options below, allow you to control the transfer of inheritance. Let's give our control node the name it deserves, and play with the scaling of our particles. A control node is especially useful, when it comes to moving and scaling complex effects. With each control node, we can add a new level of effects and animations to the children. Once we have the scale we want, set the color all parameter of our particle node to random. Make the deviation as large as possible, and you should see multicolored particles. Note that small changes here and there can create very different animations. Reset the X and Z position speed and deviation to zero. The particles now shoot upwards only. This is where you play around. Experiment with speed and acceleration values, and try combining nodes in different ways. Now for the next part of this tutorial. We will show you some more features, and demonstrate a basic laser effect. Start with a new file. Make the first node a control node. Then add a child node to this, and call it laser. Change the type of this node from Sprite, to Ring. Select Basic Render Settings, and find an image to load into this. Head over to the UV Settings, and choose Scroll. Enter the image dimensions in the Size window, and give it a Y scroll speed of 15. The image is now mapped to the Ring, and scrolling along the Y axis. Back in the first render tab, adjust the size of the inner and outer rings.
When you are happy with your dimensions, choose suitable colors for your laser rings. I'm going for blue. We will now make a copy of this node. Select the laser node and choose copy. Then select our control node and hit paste. Give the copy a new name. Increase the inner and outer positions, so it encompasses our first laser. Choose new colors to achieve the effect you want. The scroll direction is currently the same for both nodes. Let's reverse this direction in our inner beam. Change its scroll speed to minus 15. The UV mapping now travels in opposite directions. Let's tinker some more. Select our first laser, and return its color to white. Then in the basic settings tab, choose additive as the new blend type. Select our outer laser, and choose additive as well. There are plenty of options here for you to fine tune your laser. Tweak away until you're happy with the result. This will do just fine. Okay, now let's add some particles. In the node tree, click on the root, and add a new node. Make this the control node for our particles. Add a child, and name it. Select the node, and in the basic settings load an image of your choosing. Set the blend mode to additive. And remember to set the control node type to none. Select our particle node again, and increase the spawn count. Now, in the basic render settings, make the particles fade in and out, with a frame count of 5. Then change the time to live, to just 30 frames. The particles are still static, so let's add some movement. Choose PVA from the position menu. Set the Y speed to 1, with a deviation of 0.5. Next, choose PVA from the scale menu. Set the desired scaling factor of your particles. Back in the main render settings, select fixed y-axis from the configuration menu. The options in this window affect the orientation of the render. We only have one particle streak at the moment, so open the spawning method window. Here we want to choose sphere, and make sure the set angle option is switched on. Leave the radius at zero, so the particles spread out from a single point. Now, add a number range to the X and Y rotation parameters. Play around with these values, to affect the way particles are emitted. Okay, let's make the spawn count infinite, and make the particles appear quicker. Set the spawn rate to 0.3. We now have new particles every 0.3 frames. Back in the configuration window, let's test each option to see their effect. Here we set how the sprite is rotated towards the camera. We are going for the fixed Y option. This means our sprite rotates towards the camera, but the Y axis remains fixed. Looking pretty good, but let's reduce the size of the laser a bit. Select the laser control node, and reduce the scaling factor to 0.7.
control nodes are handy for this sort of stuff. Now select the particle control node and adjust its scale the same way. Hmm, a bit bigger. Now for a finishing touch, let's add a shock wave. Right click on the root and add a new node. Name this the wave controller and then add a child node for our wave. Change the control node type to none and import a sprite for our wave. All of these graphics can be found in the samples folder. Change the blend mode of our wave and then give each axis an expansion speed of 3. Now, let's reduce the time to live to about 15, and add a fade out of 5 frames. We also want more than one wave, so increase the spawn count. You'll see the shock waves are all very close together. So let's increase the spawn rate, and allow a wave to spawn every 4 frames or so. Looking better. Now select the wave control node and reduce the scale to about 0.3. Finally, in the render settings of our wave, change the configuration to fixed. The shock waves now appear on the correct plane. Hey presto, a laser effect. Feel free to add more nodes, and adapt the techniques discussed so far, to make your own funky laser. Okay, that's it for part 1. Check out part 2, where I will make fire, and explain how to export your files. Then, you'll have the skills to make complex special effects, with the greatest of ease. And, for free. Until then, bye bye.